I call to order the regular meeting of the Township of Morris Planning Board for October 7th, 2024. The legal notice required in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act has been satisfied and a statement certifying saying will be executed. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Call the roll. Yes, Mr. Kim. Mr. Barrett? Here. Mr. Flowers? Here. Mr. Murphy? Here. Mr. Benoit? Here. Mr. Quillen? Here. Ms. Buriglia? Here. Mr. Vine? Here. Mr. Warner? Here. Ms. Keller? Here. Mr. Slate? Here. And Antonio Santiago here. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we start with the meeting, I'd like to pause for a moment of silence on this October 7th anniversary of the attack on Israel uh, last year. Remembrance of all of the lives lost and those still in January, or in jeopardy. So please, a moment of silence. Thank you. We can move on with the uh, reading of the minutes, or the approval of the minutes from the August 19th. Yes, August 19th. Um, anyone have any comments, corrections, issues with them? I have a motion to approve. I move we approve uh, the guess, minutes. Uh, just, I guess, two things. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, I think. Bill and I were not actually present, okay. so yeah, we'll sure move that. into the absent column and abstain from the vote. And neither was I. That's okay. We can still vote on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was, so I, was I here? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. You were there. Uh, it says you were there. That'll look familiar to me. Right. I'll believe if you were. Donna, it says you were present as well, but you're not. You I was there. not. Oh, okay. I stand corrected. Okay. There was a correction. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I will second it. Okay. You made a motion? Mr. Mr. Coleman. Did you I did. Yes, you did. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> and, 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 and a handful of abstentions. Yes, yeah, that's what a handful of. Okay. Uh, so. On uh, the agenda, there are two applications here, but I understand we're only hearing one. Here we have a. And I think, if, if, if I may, Mr. We're carrying the one, right? Um, yes. So. Yeah. Yes. So we we actually have counsel for both applications here this evening. So uh, maybe she could speak to it. But it's my understanding uh, that we're carrying the CHC Madison Project Owner LLC application PB04-24. To, is it October 21? Yes. Uh, the uh, 7, thir excuse me, 7 p.m., the same location. And I believe that will be with with uh, further notice. Uh, but uh, oh. maybe Ms. Hurley can explain that with the chair's permission. Yeah, that yeah, is that is correct. There was a there was a notice inadvertently omitted to the county, so we had to uh, we have to renotice and, and include the county. So and, and that'll be renoticed both. Publication, publication and certified mail and certified mail to okay. everyone. Okay. So with full re-notice yes. okay, for October 21. It's already okay. on its way. So I apologize to those who get two notices, but. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, then, uh, Sonia, could you introduce the PDO 524? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, the next application is PAO 524 Morris Market. Place Urban Renewal LLC for a major subdivision, Block 10401, Block 301, 191 East Hanover Avenue in the RDP zone. Applicant proposes a major subdivision to create one additional lot. And Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes. with respect to that application, uh, I did have an opportunity to review the notice, found the content to be sufficient, and found it to be timely served. Uh, both by way of certified mail, September 25, and published 
uh, in the official newspaper on September 24th, both at least 10 days prior to this evening. So we do have jurisdiction to hear and decide uh, this application tonight. Thank you. Proceed. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Linda Hurley with the firm sure. of Riker Danzig on behalf of the applicant. Um, as Sonia mentioned, we're here tonight for the, an approval of a subdivision application to create two lots from the existing Morris Marketplace site. Um, this application is similar, very similar to the application that was before you approved um, last September, which subdivided the, uh, the Lidl building and a, and a portion of the, of the site. Uh, this proposal is to carve out um, what is on, known on the plan or is commercial G. Um, and a portion of the parking area as well. Um, this proposed new lot will be continued to be owned by the applicant in this instance. Um, the Lytle application, as you may recall, was a minor subdivision. This one has been classified as a major um, solely because of the timing of it. Your ordinance, um, as many do, say that if you bring a subsequent subdivision application within three years of your of a minor it's classified as a major to prevent a large you know a large property from being subdivided into multiple lots by way of one minor after <coughs> after the other without notice potentially to to residents so um i'll say it's a technical major um similar to the to the legal subdivision um, it's really just lines on a, on a piece of paper and um, there'll be no physical changes to the site. Um, in connection with the, the prior subdivision, the applicant had um, recorded a cross easement agreement. Um, that agreement's in place and does not need to be amended or changed. It contemplated potential future subdivisions. So the, um, the parking and, and everything that was taken care of in that agreement remains in, in effect and would apply with respect to, uh, to these new lots. Um, and with that, we have one witness tonight, our engineer, um, Anand Bhatt, who's been the engineer of record for the application uh, since I think the beginning. So I would call Anand unless there's any other initial questions or, or issues. Well, um hear from him and then we can sure. ask questions later. Sure. And Mr. Chairman, I'll, with your permission, I'll swear him in as well as our board professionals, Mr. Slate and Ms. Keller, if all three of you will raise your right hand. Do all of you swear to God or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not, go ahead. Okay. Here, we're going to share this. Yep. Repeat your qualifications again. Uh, sure. Uh, good evening, board members. My name is Anand Bhatt. I'm with R9 Engineering. I'm a principal at R9 Engineering. I have a bachelor's and master's degree in civil engineering and a professional uh, engineer in the state of New Jersey since 2003. I, my license is in good standing. And you've appeared before this board before? I have been. Thank you. Yes, I will accept. Thank, Thank you. you. If you would ex um, describe for the board, you prepared the subdivision plan that was submitted as part of this application, correct? I did. And if you would explain to the board the uh, subdivision that's proposed. Uh, as as Ms. Hurley uh, has already suggested or uh, stated, there are two lots already existing at Morris Marketplace right now. One is legal lot. One is the overall uh, 3.01 lot, which is 16.8 acres. Uh, plus or minus, and that is being subdivided into two lots. One is for Burlington, which is read commercial G, uh, which is 1.52 acres, and the remaining, <clears throat> sorry, remaining lot is 15.362 acres, which is going to be 3.01. Uh, I'm sorry, the remaining lot is 15.362 acres. 362, 362. Yep. thank you. Yeah, uh, Sonia, can we have? Can we have exhibit one? Thank you. Uh, that's the exhibit which we have submitted uh, as part of the application process. We, uh, as noted, uh, a portion in the hash area, in this middle area, just the commercial G, is at one point five two acres of 
of Marlington area. The rest is a site which is which includes the commercial A, B, C, D, and I, uh, but uh, including F, will in, continue to remain in lot number 3.01, which is going to be 15.362 acres. Uh, Lidl lot has been subdivided, so this is very similar to Lidl lot as we certainly suggested. Uh, number of parking spaces which are included in the Burlington will be shown as part of this lot uh, of 1.52 acres. However, with the reciprocal easement on for the entire site, all the parking spaces will be available for uh, for all the uh, occupant or the patrons to use. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chairman, but can you just give us the uh, uh, exact title and date of the plan that's up as Exhibit A1? Absolutely. Uh, it's called Major Subdivision Plan, drawing number CS202, <coughs> and that's dated uh, September 3rd. I want to zoom in. Let me see. September 3rd, 2024. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so again, as I said, everything remains in place. We have been in front of the TCC meeting uh, with Mr. Slate uh, and Mr. Phillips there. Uh, we have received the TCC comment letter, uh, and one of the comment was related to uh, the how it's shown and the described on this plan. It was recommended that we show a colored version of this plan so that board can clearly make out where the new lots a new lot is going to be whereas the where the existing lots are going to remain so the next plan which is exhibit a2 and that is <clears throat> dated uh it is in the same name major subdivision plan cs202 with the revision date of today this uh, october 7 2024 that would be exhibit a2 and the only revision is the addition of the color to it, correct? Correct. Uh, so we just wanted to kind of clarify for the board uh, that the, the orange lot is the larger rock lot to remain. The blue lot is the leader lot, which was subdivided last year. And the green, which is in the middle, is the Burlington lot, which is the application for. Um, do you want to go through the rest of the TCC? The TCC comments were, again, uh, the three comments which were, again, the only comment which was pertaining to the lot color was the, adding the color. And there was, a uh, on the title block, there was a number of lots which were carried from the original application. So uh, it, the number of lots, which is the lot number 3.01, 3.06, and 3.07 has been modified, uh, which is at the, uh, where it says Morris Marketplace, so right underneath that. And for the record, we did receive two memos from the- Fire department. Yep, and yep. neither one had any- No. Um, the new one, the Lidl is 306, and the new one is 307. The, 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 the Lidl is 306. The is the remaining lot. Yes, we do still need to confirm that it will be 307 with the tax assessor, but um, it's 301 remains the remainder, and it is 306 for Lidl. So we believe it'll be 307, but we do need to confirm that. And, and that was comment number four of Mr. Phillips' uh, September 30, 2024 TCC meeting summary memo? Correct. Okay. And uh, the colorization, was that uh, comment number two? Yes. Comment. Okay. And comment number one, if, I apologize, I didn't ask the chair's permission, but since I'm rolling, Mr. Chairman, may no. good day. Thank <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's speak now or forever. The the the, uh, the filing of a subdivision map is required. Obviously, you'll stipulate to that, correct? That is correct. Okay. And uh, there's also a comment with respect to all outstanding non-residential development fees, uh, as well as any other fees that may be outstanding or may become outstanding. Uh, how do you propose to address that? Those will be, uh, we agree to a condition that those will be paid prior to the signing of the subdivision plan. Uh, prior, prior to 
uh, this board or its chair or designated uh, 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 officer signing off on uh, any subdivision plat. deed or plat, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. And uh, they will, those fees and funds will be paid in full prior there too, correct? Prior to the signature, yes, correct. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. I'm done rolling for now. <laughs> Mr. Slate, do you have any? Uh, I would just add that uh, the uh, township surveyor would uh, review the final plat when it's submitted to ensure it has all the information in it. And then uh, we also have to include language. Maybe this is something that was coded with financial agreement will need to be updated just to reflect this separate lot. And I have no other uh, And that that's the financial agreement with respect to the redevelopment, since this was a redevelopment project. Right. Okay. Would you stipulate to those conditions as well, Councilor? Yes. Thank you. Board members, any questions, comments? I have a few questions. Uh, the, the first one is, just what is the overall purpose of this subdivision from the point of view of the applicant? What does this accomplish? The, uh, I believe you said the applicant would retain title to the subdivided lot. Is the that applicant correct? plans to retain title, yes. Um, potentially for fi separate financing purposes. It could, it could be separate ownership. That's not the intent right now at least, but um, for separate financing and or ownership. And I guess my next question might be more for Mr. Warner, which is the distinction between a minor subdivision and a major subdivision. And as a member of the planning board, maybe I should know this, but what are the different requirements uh, for a major versus a minor subdivision? And are these different, uh, do these cause le different levels of review for us? Uh, good, all good questions as, uh, as always. The, 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 the um, a major subdivision, uh, generally this would be a minor subdivision from two lots to one. Um, our particular ordinance, and Ms. Keller is probably pulling it up right now and can answer it better than me from re reflection, but a uh, 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 recollection, but uh, um, the reason this is a major as opposed to a minor is to avoid what I sometimes and others refer to as creeping minor subdivisions, where you get the serial minor subdivisions one after another after another, and someone avo avoids a major subdivision review by doing it that way. Um, minor subdivisions don't always require the same notice uh, and the like, so you could see why that, why we are, uh, uh, as always, on top of things and have an ordinance that prevents that from happening. And I think it's, uh, you're allowed one minor, so to speak, every three years, or else we're gonna assume you're doing the creep uh, and, and, and consider it a major. Um, now, that said, maybe uh, I could defer to Ms. Keller to explain the distinctions between major and minor and the magnitude of the review. They're relatively subtle. Yeah, so <laughs> essentially, you know, the, the, the municipal land use law provides for minor subdivisions, minor site plans, major subdivisions, major site plans, however, and it sets the noticing requirements for each of those. However, it's up to each individual municipality to decide how you want to apply those. So in Morris Township, you know, for example, um, a minor subdivision typically is anything that's, you know, not more than three lots. Um, it doesn't have any new streets, typically minor things. Um, however, you know, if you have a minor subdivision that doesn't have any variances associated with it, you don't really, you don't have, always have to, I believe you don't have to do any kind of public notice. You, you don't, yeah, under you don't. the MLUM. Under the MLUM. Okay. So that's, so that's, yeah. they're kind of, they're, so they're sort of like two separate, like parallel, but not totally combined tracks, which is the MLUL setting the notice requirements and the municipality um, defining what's major and minor. So per the MLUL, however, you do have to notice for a major subdivision. So, you know, while typically they are, you know, more major projects, things with new streets, more lots, et cetera, the, um, the township has the ability to, you know, say that something like this, where if you are 
you know, proposing a, a, another subdivision within three years of one, it cannot, it is then, then a major subdivision because that way you will have to notice for it. And so what, you know, what Steve's talking about with, you know, the creep, subdivision creep would be if you have this property and you all of a sudden, and this isn't just for this lot in particular, this could be any lot, and you and it meets the requirements for a minor subdivision, you don't need variances, but then, you know, one day you look up, the neighbors realize that it's now six lots and they haven't gotten a single notice in the mail because they were all minor. So that's really the purpose of classifying this as a major subdivision. Okay. Um, and and that, that, just, 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 just the last thing to just say quickly is that in terms of the specifications, you know, like the completeness checklist, the development checklist, things like that for a major subdivision are more comp complex because it's created for a more complex application, things like street profiles, et cetera, that Jim will re typically review. However, in something like this, where none of those things are happening, you know, the applicant can request waivers from those like they do with anything else. So from that standard, as long as none of those are part of this application, which they are not, it doesn't really change the board's review. Okay, that was very helpful, thank you. I would also just mention that a minor, and maybe it's something you were just gonna say, can be filed by D. Yes. Just the description of a lot you know, can be filed to create a lot with a major a formal file map and be created a little more involved in mm -hmm. So I do worry a little bit about creeping minor or major subdivisions because it seems like we do have a, a creep underway here. Well well we, we may not and, and I may and and counsel for applicant correct me if I'm wrong or better yet confirm that I'm correct. Uh, <laughs> when I say this it's my recollection uh, that uh, this is it for this applicant. Uh, they're limited uh, to this I guess second uh, minor that has become a major. Uh, subdivision vis-a-vis -vis the financing purposes. It was Lytle and Burlington and no more, as I recall. That is correct. There had been some discussion early on when we were, be before we came in for the, the, the uh, Lytle, Lytle I'm, I'm sure I always say it wrong, the Lytle subdivision um, as to how many there might be. And it was agreed that, or understood that after that, we would be back for one further. And that's this one there, no further. But nothing stops you from making another application. The redevelopment agreement. Yeah, the yeah, redevelopment so we, plan we, we, specifies we, only two. Yeah, limited in the agreement. Yeah. Redevelopment agreement. Redevelopment. The redevelopment agreement, plan uh, does allow for this type of financing subdivision, yeah. but the read in, you know because it is a redevelopment project, um, there's an extra layer of protection for between the township mm -hmm. and the redeveloper, and it, it's part of that redevelopment agreement, I believe, is where this is codified or will be codified <laughs> that they cannot do any more. Um, subdivisions after this. Yeah. So we have they, the they ordinance. Have to, they'd have to amend that if they wanted to change right. anything. We further. have the ordinance that prevents the creep, so to speak, by virtue of uh, uh, converting the minor to a major for more further review. And then we have the, the redevelopment agreement and the, and the understanding as between the township and uh, the uh, applicant owner of the property that this is it. Okay, so if something more were needed, that would have to go to the township committee for an amendment of the correct, redevelopment. Correct. They agreements. would have to amend an agreement before they yeah. could even apply mm -hmm. to the board. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know this was discussed with the last subdivision. Um, I want to be sure I get it right. So the services, since this could be sold as a separate lot to a separate entity the trash services um, night lights or what other services um snow removal how will that be maintained um even if it's sold to somebody else okay. Okay, that's sorry um that's all covered in that's all part of um the reciprocal easement agreement that was recorded with respect to the, the entire property um, simultaneous with, simultaneously with or as a condition to the perfection of the legal subdivision so that um, it will continue to operate as just one shopping center. So anyone who purchases this property will have to Agree the the, to the property is the pro it already. runs with the land. The property is subject to this agreement. Okay. So anyone who purchases the property takes it subject to that to that agreement. Okay, thank you. So the trash removal area that's 
designated now will continue to stay there and it'll no one will notice the difference correct correct and if, if anybody wanted to change i mean that would be a site plan change so someone would have to come in and, and get permission from this board to change the site but nothing will change okay there'll be okay. no yeah and i neglected to mention we do have a uh we always have a condition of approval uh that all prior conditions of approval not inconsistent with this approval will remain in full force and effect and i assume the applicant will stipulate to that as well yes yeah no i'm sorry what well, all prior all prior conditions Yes. Uh, of approval will remain to the extent not inconsistent with this yes. approval if it's granted yes. uh, would remain in full right. force and effect. Yes. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple quick questions. Sure. Um, so there is no present intention to sell this subdivided lot assuming the board approves it. However, in the future, if it is sold, um will the uh will there be an easement that will allow the larger lot uh users of the larger lot the stores with those lots to use the parking so that's you know? all part of the reciprocal yes. easement agreement it speaks to parking access um there's an association that will that handles mm -hmm. maintenance and trash so it's yes it's it's all and it's all so it's already in place it was reviewed by um, Mr. Warner prior, again, with part of the, um, the first subdivision, um, was recorded. And so it, it will apply to this, this, um, lot as well. Okay. Yep. And then my second question, it, it appears that there are a fair number of, um, parking spaces that would go with this new subdivided lot. Does this trigger the need to have additional EV charging stations now that this, this is technically a separate legal so the redevelopment plan that allows for um, the subdivision is specific in that if, if, if the lot is to be subdivided, it doesn't have each individual lot does not have to independently comply. Um, the TCC asked us in connection with the legal application. And again, just to show for informational purposes, um, how many parking spaces would be quote unquote, you know, part of the new lot. Um, and we've done that, but we don't need a variance um, because of any any um, any deficiency. Again, because the intent is the shopping center is continue is going to continue to be operated and run as a as one shopping center and the cross easement gives everyone the ability to to park and access. So uh, it doesn't change anything. So it doesn't make any changes, doesn't trigger any additional EV. Um, and the, and the number of parking spaces, again, it, it's looked at as through the redevelopment plan as a whole, as opposed to individual lots. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 do, I agree, agree with everything um, she just said. I just would also add, you know, that this is um, anything that either this owner, whether they keep this, whether they sell it to another entity, any changes that they would make to floor area, to the parking layout, anything, you know, even like we just mentioned, the location of the trash enclosure, all of those are would trigger site plan approval site plan amendments so you know no changes are you know th this is really just on paper for now um and all of these protections like the easements are there to ensure that they're that everything keeps running the way that it has been thank you mm -hmm. anyone else okay i will i guess note for the record that the no members. Anything, Mr. Warren? No, no, the, okay. no I have I nothing further. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. There, thank you. There, is, there are no members of the public here. So yes, uh, yes. Not be, I, guess I don't have to open it up for public questions or public comment. Um, so we can proceed, I guess. Somebody, I, I don't know if there's a brief summation from. I don't have anything <laughs> further. I don't. I just want to make sure I understand that. Um, 306 is confirmed for Lytle, but 307, you're still working with the tax assessor. Yes. So our approval will have it stated as 307 for now and will be revised if the tax assessor comes up with something Subject else. to the tax assessor's okay. approval right. and whatever was, lot the tax assessor wants it to be is what okay. will ultimately All right. be. Whatever the number, yeah. Is. Okay. So I make a motion that we approve the application. Second. I'll second. 
Call the roll sign. Mr. Flower. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Barrett. Yes. Ms. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Benoit. Yes. Mr. Quillen. Yes. Mr. Rigby. Yes. Mr. Vine. Yes. Somebody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. Uh, is there anything in the budget? Do we have a legislative anything? Not Okay, then the only other item of business is the review of the calendar. Sonia sent that out. And she had a couple of questions on the dates. I don't think she, she made the notes. There's one that would be kind of rescheduled for the 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day, and another one would be on the uh, So this is officially St. Patrick's Day. I have no objection to St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> so I don't know. Mr. Quinn said it was a high holy day. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How about anyone else? I have no idea. So uh, the Sukkot Eve, what yes. is that? Sukkot? Yes. That's Sukkot. It's a harvest holiday. It's uh, not a high holiday, but it's close to high. It's uh, yeah. it, and and uh, 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 Observant Jews would be unable to uh, uh, be here. Which means if an applicant was an observant Jew, they would not want they to would not even. Right. Yeah. Okay. For example, I have, uh, 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 I have it, uh, in another municipality, uh, that evening was, uh, uh, this year was going to be scheduled um, a, a house of worship. It wasn't, so that group will not be scheduled for that. Yeah. Well, then I would lean to rescheduling. Yeah, I would reschedule yeah. that. Sounds good. We point. should not do it on the 6th. So cancel the October 6th. That would leave us with only one in October. Can we do two Can in you September or November? No. If needed? I, I'm well, not sure rescheduling is an option. Meeting, but yes, could we do two in September instead? September, due to the holiday, it's kind no, of that's tricky. Oh, that's a bunch of holidays yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, September, we have... You can always September. keep it in if it's not a problem for... I mean, it's up to the board. Well, we're... Um, uh, I guess my question on canceling the date would right. be, is that going to be in the middle of us having to continue work on our affordable housing? Are we going to be in the middle of something having to do with our master plan review? You know, we have to project right. out a year and say, are we going to need that date? I mean, right now things are pretty slow, but that doesn't mean it's going to continue that way. I would say to keep it in and if we get closer and exactly. yeah, yeah, maybe keep it in and then cancel it. Yeah. If need be. If appropriate. Right. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably good. So keep the October keep, 6th? Keep it, keep it in and yes. we'll cancel it if we can, okay. depending on whatever our workload is at that time. Because okay. we may have several things coming at us that we right. okay. can't, okay. can't but, but So right what now. does that mean? So if we, so on the one hand, we're, we were about to cancel it, and now now we're not because why? What? Because we can't predict our workload. At right, that. but a minute ago we cared about it, right? We cared about not scheduling this because because it's Jews a would Jew, not it's be a Jewish holiday. Yeah. yeah. Is there another but now with this other thought, suddenly we're like, oh, forget it. We're going to keep it. I'm I'm going to say I don't believe our school district considers this a, a Jewish holiday for time off for the kids because it's not a not a. A high high holiday. High holiday. <laughs> um, and and there, it may, if I may, there may be, and I apologize for jumping in, but there may be um, business the board has that may not be a public hearing. Right. Still a public meeting, of course. Always our meetings are public, but it may be more along the lines of work shop type business or, or de other deadlines that you know might not be problematic ultimately. That was kind of my concern. Sorry. So that would yeah. mean don't schedule applications on that day, on that yeah, night? How do we, uh, yeah. 
I don't know. I think it's we have an atheist applicant. I think it's an atheist applicant. You may have some observant objectors. The board, that's right. The board, the board can always, the board can always decide that the workload is such that, uh, on balance, it's beneficial to cancel it, uh, as opposed to simply outright cancel it now, not knowing what the workload may be exactly. as you get closer. Yeah, and, that, uh, and then it's much more difficult to schedule and sunshine notice a <laughs> now special meeting uh, as opposed to simply say yes. on balance. I agree. Uh, we, you know, uh, we can we can cancel it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm just the fill in, but you know, but, but in my experience, you know, with things that have come up at our firm, for example there might be things that don't require public meetings. Like you may have to go into an executive session about something and then you have a meeting that's scheduled or um, there may be something like an ordinance, um, um, the the master plan consistency, uh, consistency review, review yeah, right. which is not technically a public meeting, but you know, if, if hmm. there's something that, that the country committee wants. So essentially, you know, it, it you can try not to schedule or not schedule any public hearings for it, but as, as Steve said, it's easier to cancel than to add back on. Definitely. Especially with a lot of the uncertainties that are going on with, you know, just just all the different state laws and you know master plan, et cetera. So, is it possible to keep this on the schedule but not schedule applications for that meeting? Or yeah, we can just it, note that. I don't know yeah. to keep yeah. track of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're keeping October sixteenth. About St. Patrick's Day. What about St. Patrick's? Are we keeping St. Patrick's Day? <clears throat> I say yes. Yeah, so the big okay. celebration is always on the weekend, anyways, right? Yeah. They always. It's so usually Monday, a weekend. Great right? right? on the weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so in, in, unless you're going into the city to partake of that debauchery, I would so say I, we're probably okay. okay. <laughs> so keep keep so, it. I would so keep, keep it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So maybe, yeah, okay. So are we okay with our, the schedule as is then? So that, that can I just want to point out one thing, and I may not have noticed this last year, but it looks like there's a long gap between the December 1st and January 12th meeting, like a six week yeah. mm -hmm. break. Is that typical? I just don't remember, other than the summer cancellations, that something was blocked out for that extended you, period. Usually, no, usually going in December, meeting. we only have one meeting right. due to the holidays and stuff like okay, that. Which is the so first. So we only have one. So okay. really so none in this December, year, I mean, next year will fall December 1st. I got you. Normally, it's like later, 7, 8. Maybe that's what but, I'm thinking. Okay. And, and okay. does the Jan January one and seems Jan a little late, but is that because of the calendar or the committee meeting right. organization? We have to wait. Yeah, yeah. Or can't meet until all the committee meetings. Yeah. All yeah. meetings are have, will be are, are held after the reorganization. Yeah. So yeah, uh, just okay. Weird. Then it's, it's kind of weird. weird. All right. Yeah, that's okay. fine. And that's I believe catch, next it's January will probably be later. Yeah. Um, the or reorganization. Yeah, it occurs within the. First seven days of the year. Right. Okay. By, by the way, if, if we needed it, could always uh, schedule a special meeting if we got a quorum for even December 15th, perhaps. I'm happy not to put my. <laughs> 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 we could, we could all could attribute that to work. <laughs> 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 right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why. Yeah, <laughs> the karma thing. <laughs> Okay, so we, again, we have no public here, so I don't think we have to run the general public comments and no reason for a closed session at this time. And we don't have Joe here to make a vote. Well, well, I talked to Joe. We'll never get out. He said he wanted to make sure that we push this through. Should we call he him up and here. say, oh. I, yes. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, so we're soon to get our uh, input on the fourth round for affordable housing. October 20 is the yes. deadline for DCA. Uh, and uh, October 20 is the deadline for DCA. So, so they're frantically uh, scribbling we'll numbers, I guess. They, the computers are be crunching hard. I'm, I'm sure they, they are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there's nothing for us to do in advance of that other than scratch our heads and say, what are we well, up with? Yeah, not, nothing certainly formal. Uh, 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 as I had mentioned uh, uh, at the town hall, we did uh, the uh, township hall, I should say. 
the the um, uh, the professionals are already working on looking at last year's vacant land, yeah. last year, last round's vacant land adjustment, and making projections and thinking about you know things in that regard. So the plans are uh, uh, the, the process from a an internal professional standpoint has begun. Okay, we're being preactive, not yes. reactive. Right. Um, but there's only so much we can be proactive about. Right. A, not knowing the number, and B, uh, ultimately, uh, we know what all the rules, the bonus credits, et cetera, mm -hmm. that were afforded. Uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, once that number is formalized, uh, then by January 30, uh, the township will adopt a resolution with that number or a different number, uh, depending on. Uh, and then uh, we will have, by, ja uh, by January 30, mm -hmm. we will have the final binding number. Right. Um, and at that point, I anticipate we'll uh, have been as proactive as we can be to that point, and then we'll be moving forward full steam ahead because it's only uh, less than six months. Right. It's about five months thereafter that we have to have our housing element fair share plan in place and our draft implementation ordinances uh, in place. If, if I could just make one last comment for yes. the record, I attended the affordable housing presentation that was put on by our professionals and um, and our governing body members, uh, Mr. Ravitz, Don were there. Uh, it was an outstanding presentation. I thought it was very informative, well put together. I think it answered all the questions we could answer at this point in time, recognizing that we are waiting for additional data and um, and, um, you know, I think that everyone came away feeling better informed um, about the whole process. So I, I just want to congratulate all of you I'll who, second that. who finger, who finger printed very all that work. Oh, I'd be happy to work for him. We were glad to hear that. Yeah. 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 I, think, I think we need yes. a roll call Jim. vote on that. I told Paul not to do that. <laughs> But you know, <laughs> when the number arrives, will we, uh, as a board, get to see that number and the calculations? Well, I guess I want to know: Will the DCA say this is how we calculated the number, or we We're just the will they just the send in a number? Here's yeah, your number. It's, the, it's the in the law. It's codified it's in, in the, the yeah. legislation. The methodology. Well, it's a reference to a 250-page thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, but the difference is that now, you know, even though it's hard to parse, it it, it is it, there. It, it is there. In the past, it was all sort of being done on the fly. Um, but you know, all of this will, you know, it, it, it will be explained, you know, over the time. But yeah, when the, we you know, and I can just say, you know, at our firm, Paul and Liz are, you know, we're we're going approaching all of these as like the the as the timeline it sticks as it did as it is in the. Um, legislation, you know, everything will be ready to go before those dates hit, so you can do those quick turnarounds, like Steve said, with the with that. But yeah, with the with the number, um, I'm not sure exactly how it will be distributed, but you know, it'll of course be, you know, the, the township will know it. Yeah, we'll you know, yeah. So my understanding is there's supposed to be a report. Yeah. And I understood that to mean at least some explanation as to how the uh, uh, Jacobson quote unquote methodology. Yes. Uh, is uh, implemented and effectuated at a state level, and then I forgot the term, but brought down, for lack of a better term, to the regional level, and then brought down to the municipal level. Okay. Uh, so we're supposed to see that. Yes. Um, uh, just like we're supposed to see everything else on or before the <laughs> October twentieth. Um, and uh, certainly, I, in my opinion, uh, being able to examine that is important. Uh, in order to comfortably adopt the resolution with that number, or for that matter, comfortably adopt the resolution uh, with a different number. Um, because, uh, and this is just my opinion, this is not anyone else's opinion. Um, given that the methodology is statutorily provided for, one would think there's not a lot of wiggle room if the methodology is properly Utilize and implemented by DCA, but if, if I would always reserve the right to argue, I'm an attorney. If right. the Jacobson <laughs> opinion is completely clear, 
And if it's, if it's well implemented, properly implemented, yes. But those are two very large assumptions. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yes. <laughs> Do we have like a and range of what we're expecting? We have no clue or we have no idea at all? I don't want to, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't want to. I mean, you're obviously you're planning on something. You must have an idea of what. Nobody wants to give out. Nobody a wants to guess. Every, every yeah. municipality, when someone says, yeah, but can't you pull it? No, it, it's just, you don't, you don't want to be high. You don't want to be low. Yeah. You don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when the and, person mentioned a thousand last week and you said, let's hope it's not a thousand. Well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and well, I, let's put it this way. I think it's safe to say, and I won't say anything more than this, but I always think it's safe to say, this fact the yeah. third round was a 26 year round that's a yeah. fact the fourth round is a 10 year round right. i'm not suggesting someone take a certain number mathematically divide by whatever that number would do mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but, the, but um if one takes those two facts uh into uh mind Perhaps you can go ahead and have your own speculations as to what range it may be. I won't say anything more. Other than that, it's a rank speculation. <laughs> okay. So, so the work that's been done, we've been doing so far, the open land assessments, reviewing the last one, which is not necessary. It's like it's part of the it's included in the methodology. Is this is a way to address? Well, that that's a way of addressing it without getting into too much. Detail that the vacant land adjustment that was done before is being, as I understand it, updated because it's mm -hmm. been it's, eh, six yeah. years. Twenty eighteen. Uh, about then, yeah, about six yeah. years. And it, it's it not every town does them. You know, in some towns, if you if you have yeah. if you have the ability to do that, you know, we're we're, we're recently just updating it to reflect current conditions, mm -hmm. so you, we have everyone has the most accurate assessment mm -hmm. of what's going on. And the vacant um, land adjustment doesn't change the number, no. right? Uh, but what it does is it changes. Uh, uh, it's utilized to realistic. break out the number yeah. between what is the realistic development potential and sometimes referred to as the harder of the two numbers, if you will, that needs okay. to be addressed more direct through more yes. direct mechanisms and the unmet need number, which is the balance of that total number, which is addressed with less direct mm -hmm. or can be uh, uh, addressed with less direct mechanisms. To, to speak broadly. Mm -hmm. So I always view them as two sort of baskets or columns or whatever in my mind can visualize one versus the other. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And so that, you know, that the, the details will have changed since the last round, but you know, that, mm -hmm. that kind of inherent thing is still part of the, yeah. uh, the mechanism still expected yeah. to be utilized. And that's why it's being updated by the planners and focused on, uh, you know, for utilization mm -hmm. in this next, in this round, because uh, it will uh, undoubtedly be a part of the analysis and the how uh, 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 the fair share plan, the housing on the fair share plan, that'll be adopted uh, on or before June 30. First, we first DCA has to get to uh, October 20th. Yeah, well, another thing. Yeah, all those numbers are, by the way, in the stat. All those dates are in the statute. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, but if, if if DCA doesn't make the October 20 date, there's nothing in the statute that gives anyone any more time, uh, unless to, uh, the statute gets amended, which they which they have done. Already. They've already missed yes. a, a June date and got it uh, changed to a September date for auditing of certain. Uh, yeah, so we're, not, we're just not sure how it's going to go, but we're, everyone's progressing that every these dates are these set in stone dates. Obviously. We won't miss any deadlines. Can't can't promise DCA won't, yeah. but we will. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Yes, thank you. Can I get a motion to adjourn since Joe's not here? <laughs> move, move to adjourn. All right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye